Hey, what's up guys? We're going to be taking a look at a Benchmade knife today. Uh, this was actually a gift from my very good friend Apophysis 7 for my birthday last year. And uh, Kirk, I promised you I'd get to this review sooner or later. I apologize for the delay on this one, but hey, better late than never. So without further ado, here we go. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Benchmade Gravitator, model 426. Uh, this particular Benchmade was designed by, right there on the blade, the world famous Mike Snowdy. I'm sure you've all heard of him, a very famous custom knife maker. Uh, my good buddy Edge Weapon 88 just uh, bought a custom knife made. By um, this is actually a discontinued knife. Uh, they do not make these anymore, have not made them for quite some time. Um, it is in the blue class and bench made, but um, the materials uh, suggest otherwise. Uh, they suggest a bit more premium of a knife. But as always, let's go ahead and jump right into the specs, and we're going to do it a little bit different today. 4.77 inch handle, 3.46 inch blade, 8.25 inches overall, 4.54 ounces in weight. Uh, the blade steel is 154 cm. A handle material is a what Benchman calls a machined G10, uh, which is the oddest looking G10 I've ever seen. It does not feel like G10 at all. Um, it actually looks and feels a lot more like carbon fiber, so that's pretty cool. Uh, pocket clip, right side tip down only. That's a big negative for me. I know Benchmade has a pretty firm policy that when it's not an axis lock or some other type of um, what they refer to as more of a secure lock, uh, their company policy is that it's going to be tipped down only for security reasons. I think that's absolutely ridiculous and they really need to get with the program and see that the rest of the knife companies in the world wholeheartedly disagree with that and somehow we're not all stabbing ourselves when we're putting our hands in our pockets. Uh, this is made in the United States of America. Awesome, go USA. Uh, the blade shape is really, really strange on this one. Um, Benchmade calls it a modified spear point, uh, which I would agree with. I mean, the definition of a spear point, basically, that the uh, the two sides of the uh, the blade steel are more or less equal, forming a equal spear point to the tip, which it is in this case. But when I look at it, when I look at the overall knife, for some reason, it kind of looks like a harpoon to me. You know, <laughs> just uh, just kind of an odd looking shape. I mean, a really cool looking shape, don't get me wrong, but just the way the handle kind of sweeps in the blade, it just looks like this should be at the head of a harpoon, you know, skewering a whale or something. Liners on this, uh, full titanium, uh, what they refer to as double thick titanium liners. Uh, this has not been, um, no real cutouts or anything for weight. I mean, this is basically a full uh, titanium linered knife. So this is pretty rough and tumble stuff. And if you look, on how thick these things are. Um, this, in my opinion, I'd have to disagree uh, just a little bit with Benchmade on this, as I guess technically it's a liner lock, but with the thickness of the, we'll call it the liners, but it's actually the frame, um, with the thickness of the liners being so pronounced, um, in my opinion, this is a bit closer to a frame lock. Now, before all you Chris Sabenza freaks go off on me, um, I understand that this does have scales on top of it, and this technically qualifies as a liner. However, um, the frame of the knife is basically this titanium center, which, as you can see, goes all the way around, all the way to the back. The scales are just sitting on top of the frame. So, if this titanium piece is the frame, then would that not make this a frame lock? In my opinion, it is, but hey, teach their own, right? Okay, this is a flow-through design, pillar construction. So you can see that's really flow-through. You've only got two pillars at the end there, so no problem at all getting a Q-tip in there cleaning. Uh, it's put together with torque screws uh, so that you can take it apart pretty easily. Uh, the pocket clip style on this is uh, what I call the Benchmade arrow. So you can see it just kind of points like an arrow down. Blade centering on it, I don't know how else to describe it other than perfect. I mean, look at that, that's right dead center. So, excellent job on that one, Benchmade. Uh, the thumb studs are really well placed on this one. They're right in what I would call the, the logical position for opening, so you can get it open fast. So, they really did a good job on that one. You got nice, big, beefy thumb studs on this, so it's really easy to get a good grip on it and get that sucker open. Uh, bronze washers in the opening. The lockup on it, rock solid. I have no complaints on that end of the uh, bargain there. I mean, it's just, there's no blade wiggle at all. Got a uh, pretty generous amount of blade jumping right there on the back of the handle, so uh, you got a nice little thumb ramp to get a good bite on it. Okay, that would bring me to the first hit that I would have to give on the knife. Um, given that this knife is, first of all, it's a Benchmade, um, and it's also a, a Mike Snowdy design, you know, both of those are generally affiliated with quality. Um, the blade tent on this, the blade detent, excuse me, on this, I would really have to say is borderline horrible. Um, 
it's it's not really hard to get the blade loose at all just a quick flick of your wrist and the thing comes out I mean it's on similarly priced um, spider co's and things like that or even Kershaw's um, that have a much much lower price the blade detent isn't nearly that horrible I mean you don't really have to flick your wrist much at all and the thing just flies open so that's that's definitely it's it's not a big deal to me I'm not worried about this thing flying loose um, when it's in my pocket or when I'm holding it it's just the the reason I'm giving it a criticism is who makes it who designed it and the price point that they were asking for it you know for a hundred and forty fifty sixty dollar knife um, I'm sorry but blade detent of that low of a quality is just unacceptable so bad job on that one Benchmade. Um, there is also another uh, variant of this called uh, the Model 425 which is basically the same knife with the same handle however um, it comes with a modified drop point blade um, that in my opinion kinda looks like a Warncliffe again that one is discontinued but you may be able to find it in your secondary markets like eBay or other online uh, sources like that. Alright let's jump into some size comparisons here put Mr. Gravitator in the middle there bring in a Benchmade alumni Good old Mr. Mini Griptilian, Spider Code Delica, the Kershaw Half Ton. All right, we'll show you guys the carry view here. As you can see, even though it is um, tip down only, it does ride decently low. It doesn't protrude out of the pocket all that much, and it is a pretty comfortable ride. You know, it's uh, it's right in that sweet spot height. However, it's just, I guess you just get so spoiled uh, when you deal with uh, having the option for tip up. So that's one thing I've always really disliked about Benchmade is that they won't budge on that stupid policy that. Uh, any liner lock knife they make will be tipped down only for safety reasons. Well, that's Benchmade. I don't think you're giving your customer base enough credit on intelligence on that one, but that's just my opinion. So, but anyways, uh, not too bad, all things considered. All right, let's do a little cutting demonstration here. Let's see how this guy holds up. Ooh. no virtually no friction at all wow considering I've had this thing all that time man that's nice Whew. great job Snowdy and Benchmade excellent stuff in conclusion guys I think the Benchmade 426 Gravitator is a really cool knife it's definitely a, a cool collector's knife and um, overall, the, the refinement of it is definitely there, you know, as far as the materials, um, the construction, the fit and finish seem to be on point. The, I just really hate to have to give it a hit on the detent, just being really, I mean, I don't know what else to call that, but crappy. I mean, on much, uh, much lower priced knives and, ver and similarly priced knives that I have from different companies, uh, like Spyderco, for example, I've never come across detent that's that poor um, when a company is asking that much for the knife. Um, other than that, um, it's, it's, it's really just a great knife. I mean, again, they don't make these anymore. You may be able to find it um, in your secondary market, but um, if you're a Benchmade collector, this is definitely one that you need to have in your collection. I mean, it's Benchmade, it's Mike Snooty, dynamite combination. Um, so again, um, I do like the knife. It's, it's cool. This is definitely a collector piece with me. A little bit big for an EDC for me, just my personal opinion. I tend to gravitate, <laughs> like what I did with that, gravitate towards the, um, the medium smaller size knives um, it, just on a matter of personal preference you know I like to keep my pocket space as, as open as I can so this is just a little bit big for me uh, I want to thank uh, my good buddy Apophysis 7 Kirk very much for this is a freaking awesome birthday present man thank you very much um, again I'm so sorry to take so long to do this review but as promised here it is 
Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and found this review informative. And um, if any of you were looking for a Benchmade collectible, this is definitely one that should be on your radar. It's a really cool knife. Uh, for all the best gear, knives, flashlights, you name it, go ahead and go over to www.whitemountainknives.com and enter discount code MJF to get 10% off your order and it's free shipping inside the United States. And as always, guys, stay fit, stay strong, stay supreme. Thanks for watching. See you next time.